Hello, I'm Chris Nikolai. I'm the Delta Waterfowl Research Scientist, and today we're going to talk about duck bands, specifically bands that you can't read. Um, you know, you shoot a bird, or some of us biologists are out capturing birds, and we'll catch a, a band that's totally smooth from getting worn out. And what that is, you know, I've got some here that's from salt water, and that can either be from coastal ocean salt water, or it's really common in the Intermountain West where I used to live from the hypersaline wetlands that just melt these bands over time, almost like butter. So they get really smooth, you can't see the numbers, and we're, we're finding a lot of projects where we're trying to estimate things like survival and how long they live, or simple things like making maps, you know, from where they're banded to where they're shot. And we'd like to help people, uh, you know, contribute to getting these long-lived bands into our data sets that we're using for all kinds of different purposes. So today we got everything set up. I've got three smooth bands right here that uh, have never been etched before. They're, they came off of Brant projects in which we have a second band on the leg, so we use those to deal with our data set. But these are perfect as an example here. And then we've got muriatic acid. I bought at a local hardware store. It's used a lot for balancing your pH levels in swimming pools. It's also used for etching decorative concrete on patios. I've got several things of water here, a container here, a couple spray things here. It'll help neutralize the acidic solution. And I've got baking soda as well. That'll kill it instantly. So I've already got them poured into these containers here. I've got one glass container here of water, got some baking soda here just to shut stuff off, and then I've got the acid. Notice they're both uh, same levels, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour the acid into the water. Don't do it the other way. Try to keep it from splashing, and that's just gonna dilute it down a little bit. And we're gonna go ahead and grab one of these bands and just plunk it in here and uh, we're going to let it go for about 30 seconds each time, and then we're going to pour it out, neutralize it, and see if we can read the bands. If we can't, we'll put it back in. So the way these aluminum bands are made is they're not etched. They're actually stamped. So what happens is underneath each one of those numbers, the density of the aluminum is higher. So we're going to put it in this acid, and it's going to take that layer off, and what it's going to do is let that higher density metal where the numbers are pop up and raise and we'll be able to read the entire band and then you can get online and report it like a normal band put in the comments section that you used acid etching and it'll contribute to uh, management decisions down the road you know so i'm watching right now and i can see it bubbling and fizzling i'm gonna go ahead and pull this a little closer towards me here and i'm using uh metal um tweezers here. I'm going to go ahead and put some water back in this other container just so I have somewhere to neutralize things. I don't want my tweezers to melt. And it's still bubbling away here. I've had this in just about 30 seconds now. I'm going to go ahead and pull it out. I'm going to throw it in the water, and that neutralizes it big time. Go ahead and look at it. And right now, I still can't see any numbers at all. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back in here, and we'll give it another 30 seconds. So we're on our third round of uh, letting it sit in here for 30 seconds, and each time we take it out, drop it in the clean water just to neutralize what we're touching right now and look at it and it still hasn't worked so we put it back in here and uh, we're going to wait some more. Okay, so this is the fifth time we've had it in here for 30 seconds. I'm going to pull it out and look at it again. Go ahead and neutralize it. Let it sit for just a second. And I can actually start seeing some numbers here. I'm just going to wipe it on some paper towel. And we're actually making some progress here. I can definitely see about half the band code already. So I'm going to put it back in and we'll give it a couple more chances.
So yeah, so I wanted to do this because uh, on social media, especially the last couple of weeks, it really seems like I've been seeing a lot of people posting up pictures, you know, out in the field with a band, and they're like, man, we can't read a single number off of this, and everyone's talking, well, you can do this, you can do that. Number one, if you want to get it done right, send it to the Bird Banding Lab. Look for a guy named Matt Rogowski. He will respect that these are trophies. You know, you can mail it to him. He'll get it back. Well, he'll take care of it. He'll mail it back to you. And, you know, you're dropping $4 in postage. He's a really good guy. I've sent my own bands in there before. This is more of an alternative if, you know, you're kind of a hands-on kind of guy or if you're really nervous about letting one of these trophies out of your own hands, you can give this a try. It's going to run you about the same amount of money. And if it doesn't work, get it back to Matt and he'll be able to solve it for sure. Okay, so we've had it in here for seven rounds of 30 seconds. And each time we start seeing more and more, and I've been writing on my piece of wood right here, each number that I can read. But one thing that really helps is use a bright light to get some reflection off of it. And uh, you can start looking at the numbers. And, you know, it took a long time for us to get the second to last number. But we've, we've got them all now, and they really show up good. We're trying to photograph them. And it's just hard to get that right reflection to be caught in the, in the photograph. So we accomplished it after seven bouts of 30 seconds in here and be able to contribute to uh, knowing which bird we shot and be able to get a certificate.